I'm Erin Knoll here with the World of Outlaws over at Larson Marks Racing and with Shane Stewart, and he's going to take us on a shop tour today. Yeah, how are you? Great. <laughs> how are Lovely you? Lovely to have you guys here. We um, Actually, this is the first time I've seen the shop. Oh, um, awesome. I, I came here yesterday, flew in from Indy, and uh, the guys literally threw all the stuff in here right before they went to Yuma to race with Kyle, and um, they've done a heck of a job getting it as organized as yeah. it is, so... They've done a, a heck of a, obviously, as you guys can see, they're, they're working on the cars for next year and, um, it's, it's, uh, down to the, uh, to the wire, but we've got a couple of days left before the guys have to head off to Florida and I'm here to uh, get my seats fitted and, and, uh, make sure Scotty and Steve's doing their job and Andrew. So I'll take you on a quick tour. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have actually seen inside one of our haulers, but, um, you know, these haulers are literally um, shops on, on wheels. Uh, you know, this is kind of Steve's area here. He's got his own shock dyno here that he, um, he tests all the, the factory cane shocks on um, after every race. Uh, and sometimes in between the nights, he can rebuild a shock, um, put a shock on the, on the shock dyno, and uh, make sure that it's the numbers that, that, uh, that he wants. So this machine right here is... Uh, uh, something that's really important in, in today's sprint car racing is, is that. They use this all the time. Um, now, does every race team have one of those? Pretty much. Yeah, every every race team now has a, has a shock dyno on board. Just, you know, the shock technology has is, is stepped up so much. And, um, you know, it's just it's a huge part of, of what we do. Um, in this T&E trailers, we can haul four engines. They're not in here right now, but... Um, you can put two here, uh, two uh, right behind where you're at. Um, back here is where we keep our pins. Obviously, uh, tires and wheels will be stacked here when we when we leave the shop. How many normally fit up in here? Um, uh, good question. They generally have uh, three or four right rears um, mounted, ready to go, and then they would have probably four or five left rears up here, and then spare wheels, and then front tires. So it'll haul, you know, 10 or 12 tires that are ready to go. So, you know, when Andrew, when Steve asks Andrew to, to change the stagger, um, he can come in here and, and pick out another tire, and, and it's a pretty easy process. So our front ends are doing this cabinet here. They're all ready to go. We can haul three front ends. Uh, we got tie rods and drag links that are uh, set and ready to go when you're out on the road. Um, as much as these guys are, this trailer will pretty much be able to build two or three cars. So all these parts are pretty important to have. This is our, our rear end cabinet here where we can haul two rear ends, complete, ready to go. Hopefully you don't need them, but <laughs> in case yeah. you do, it, uh, it's, it's important there. to have. Um, just fuel jugs. And then uh, back here, they have a little cabinet here for the welder. It's kind of stationary and of course you know there again you hope you never need that piece of equipment but it's uh so it's you're nice using Lincoln Welder. Awesome. yeah so all right let's go keep walking um you can see on this side of the trailer that uh we've got our wings um getting ready to be decaled by shadow graphics um that should be happening in the next couple of days and those come like that or do you have to make those or um, how often so how long does something like that take? the wings actually come like this as you can see uh, and then the guys have to put the sideboards on the braces and then once they get the sideboards and braces put on they uh, send it to the powder coater so how long does it take to make a wing oh uh, to get one ready or to wings. go probably probably three hours i'd yeah. say something like that so it's a little bit of work so every time you yeah. see a car yeah. roll over <laughs> yeah i can it, imagine you can understand why the crew guys there's, get a little angry because oh, yeah, there's a lot sure. of work that goes into these into these sprint cars as you guys can see over here we're Andrew's been uh, getting our new uh, weld wheels put together. They come somewhat assembled, and when they get to the shop, we take them apart, or the guys take them apart and send it to the anodizer, and and um, they come back nice, black and shiny, and ready to hit the dirt. Um, they've got uh, three cool chassis here that uh, are in stages of, of assembly. Um, we're going to start with this car here. Um, and then obviously this car is going to be complete with the engine ready to go and then it'll be put upstairs and i'm assuming that the third car will be kind of a kit car which will go upstairs 
and the trailer and it'll be ready to go if we you need it two full cars in yeah well the... we'll have we'll have we'll have two full cars one that we obviously race one that's ready to go and then we'll have a kit car that uh, what we call a kit car which has a body and brake lines and so how long does something in this nature like this one how long does it take to build from bottom to top normally well actually it doesn't take that long if they've got everything if they've got all the parts in hand um, you can literally build a sprint car from ground up in six hours wow. so um, you know when we got a good crew like ours and know what they're doing this stuff goes together pretty easily so um, obviously during the winter time it takes a little longer because the guys are a little bit more tedious and try to make things right the first time but once you get racing and get all your spare set up uh, if we crash we can literally have a car ready to go in, in four to six hours wow. so it's pretty cool yeah. they go together pretty quick um, over to the left here is kind of a storage area where the guys have all the uh, you know the oil and you know, brake clean and cleaning products that, the, that they're going to use. Will this all, all that go onto the trailer when you guys leave, or do you have a separate? Mo most of that uh, will definitely go in the trailer. So when, when the guys leave um, for Florida, that trailer is going to be pretty stocked, and uh, most of those shelves will be empty. So it's pretty wild how much stuff you can actually um, carry on put in, this, the, yeah. in the trailer they're 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 built Usually it's your home away from home yeah so. um, um this is a car that we finished the year with and the car that kyle larson won at at yuma uh just sitting here ready to go in case in case he need it so got some spare front axles that are ready to go um this is kind of the machinery area where steve uh is what this is what he's really good at steve's a great machinist and so can you tell us what he's doing right now? Um, it looks like he's getting ready to weld some mufflers uh, on some Schoenfeld headers. It's header day. Header day. He header day, okay. <laughs> uh, most of the tracks we run out now require a, a Schoenfeld muffler. And Steve will weld, probably, he'll probably have four or five sets of, of headers with mufflers welded on it. That'll go up in the trailer. Um, if you crash one, it's easier just to pull it out with everything welded on it. And, can you tell us the importance of a muffler for those? Well, your engine doesn't run without a header, so you have to have that. Um, some of the tracks we still race at uh, doesn't require a muffler, and you actually get the true sound of a sprint car, which yeah. is really awesome. Um, they have a really unique sound, and uh, we call it throaty, right? They got a great, yeah, they got a great okay. sound to it. So, but like I said, a lot of the tracks we go to now require a muffler and. Um, you know, Steve's obviously uh, going to weld the mufflers on it, so these things are ready to go in case that, in case we need to have uh, a set of headers with mufflers. Um, this is kind of the machinery area. I've got a lathe and, and a lathe and a mill. Um, I got a saw here that that Steve uses. You know, Steve uses these machines on a daily basis, pretty much. So glad he does it because I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're pretty technical <laughs> machines, but. Uh, Steve's, like I said, Steve's really, really good at, at running these machines. We got some spare uh, set of uh, Schoenfeld headers that um, different lengths and different uh, tube thicknesses that um, we can change according to the way the track is. Um, sometimes if it gets slick, we change headers. And, um, you know, the header technology is kind of like the shock technology. It's kind of advanced a lot over the last several years. And, we're uh, we're fortunate to have Schoenfeld as one of our sponsors, and, and they take good care of us. That looks like it. You have a lot. Yeah, yeah. But guys, yeah. In a nutshell, that's uh, that's kind of LMR racing. It um, it's a work in progress, as you guys can see. And um, I'm sure if you guys come back in a couple months, it's probably going to look a little different. Right, but yeah, enjoyed having you guys here, and and uh, showed you just a little bit of of what the guys have been working hard on all winter, and and. Um, Hopefully uh, we can we can hit the road on on all eight cylinders in Florida and, and see you guys back at the lane. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Shane, You're and welcome. I'm Erin Noll with the World of Outlaws.